So here is an example that we're going to solve using a digital system and we will see that it will not be enough to just use the output as a function of the inputs. We will also need a memory. So the problem definition is as follows. We have a zoo where there is an enclosure for lions. This enclosure will consist of two parts. The first one is a cage where the lions can rest and then we have the actual enclosure which is a big open field where the lions can stroll around. The enclosure here is very hilly, so it is very difficult to overview. So when the keeper wants to clean the enclosure, uh, he wants to do it while the lions are in the cage. So he needs a system where there is a lamp that we're going to call danger that will tell if there is a lion in the enclosure or if it is in the case, cage. At the passage between the cage and the enclosure, there are two photo detectors. We call them G1 and G2 and they are, par they are parted by half a meter. The lions are about two meters long and they cannot pass the passage at the same time. So what we want to do now is that we want to construct a circuit that will solve this problem for one lion and the inputs to this circuit is G1 and G2. Here is an overview of what we have. So we have the cage where the lions can rest and then we have the enclosure where they can stroll around and here in the passage between the cage and the enclosure we have the two filter de detectors G1 and G2. So these will give a zero as an output if there is no lion that is passing the detector and it will give a one as an output if there is a lion passing the detector. And then we have the lamp here that is going to show that if we have and uh, if we have a lion inside the enclosure or not. What we can see here is that we cannot solve this by just using the signals from G1 and G2 because the signal 0, 0, where G1 gives a 0 and G2 gives a 0, will mean either that the lion is inside of the cage or that it is in the enclosure. So we need some kind of memory here in the system that will allow us to know if the lion is in the cage or if it is in the enclosure. So if we go from the cage to the enclosure, what will happen here is that our two signals G1 and G2, they will take the values, well first we will have 0, 0 because the lion is in the cage, then we will have one zero because we are now crossing the detector G1, but we are not crossing the detector G2. Since they are half a meter apart, the next signal that we will get when the lion keeps walking is one one, and then we get zero one, and then again we will get zero zero when the lion is now inside the enclosure. If the lion will walk in the other direction from the enclosure back in the cage, then G1 and G2 will now instead take the sequence 0, 0, 0, 1 because we are first crossing the detector G1 then it will be 1, 1 then it will be 1, 0 and then finally the lion is back in the cage and we will have 0, 0. So we can represent this by using a state diagram. So the first state we will say now that the lion is inside the cage and the second state will be that the lion is in the enclosure. If we are inside the cage now what we want to do is that we will have one behavior for each of the possible input signals. So if we first start with the input signal 0, 0, well it will mean that we are still in the cage. So 0, 0 here will mean that we stay in the cage and then we have the output 0 because there is no danger in this case. Next thing that will happen is that the lion will now go to the enclosure and he will cross the detector G1. So here we will say that, well, we stay in the cage, but we will have danger. And in uh, the next step, we will have 1, 1 as the input, and we will still have danger. Now we have reached 
this stage here where we are crossing the detector G2. So here we say that now we are going from the cage to the enclosure when we have the input 0, 1 and the output here will be 1 because this will mean danger. Now as long as we are crossing this second detector 0, 1 we say that we're going to stay inside the enclosure then we will be in the enclosure walking around we will have danger then we start going back so we will have uh, in this case 0 1 which we already covered then we have 1 1 which means that we say that we are still in the enclosure we're not finally back in the cage and for 1 0 we will go back to the cage so this is the full behavior of the system. We have for each of the states, we have defined what is happening for the different possible inputs that we have. And we're also saying uh, what are the outputs for these possible inputs. We can define this using the truth table in the same way as we did before. So what we have now is our states, which is uh, given as one of the inputs. And we have G1 and G2 as uh, also inputs. So what we first have to do now is that we have to make a state assignment. We have to call the states something. So we will do this arbitrarily for the moment. So we will say that the state C, we will just denote by a zero and the state E, which means enclosure, we will denote by a one. This means that we can now write the truth table. So if we call the state Q and then we have our detectors G1 and G2, now we can do the truth table, we enumerate all the possible variants of the state and the inputs. So we have the eight different alternatives here. And then now from this we will need to define two different outputs. One of the outputs is the next state that we denote by Q plus and the other one is the lamp that we here call danger. So when we fill out this truth table we look at our state transition graph so when we are in state 0 and we get the inputs 0 0 that we have in the first row here it means that we are looking at this one we are in state 0 because C is called 0 and we have the, the input 0 0 so here we will stay in the state that we denoted 0 and the lamp will not show danger in the next row here we are still in the state 0 and we have the input 0 1 this was this one that we defined here which means that we're going to state number that we denoted 1 and the danger lamp will be 1 in the next case case we are in state 0 and we have the input 1 0 it is this one here we stay in the state 0 and we have danger the next one we're in state 0 with 1 1 it is this one so we stay in the state 0 and we have danger the last four means that we are in state 1 so state 1 with inputs 0 0 it is this one in this case we stay in state 1 and we have danger the next row we are in state 1 and we have the input 0 1 it is this one here we stay in state 1 and we have danger 1 the next row we're in state 1 with 1 0 it is this one here here we go back to state 0 and we still have danger and the final row in our truth table is that we are in state 1 and then we have the input 1 1 so here we stay in state 1 and we have danger equals 1 so this is the truth table that defines the behavior of this system.